What's up guys? Thanks for stopping back by the channel. So, finally found some time to finally get over and uh, review the Creter Professional 123E scanner they sent me. Seems like a decent scanner. You guys know I peeked in the box, but I'm going to go ahead and do a quick unboxing. We're going to throw these on a couple vehicles, see how it performs. Check it out. Shut up and sit down. So here's the box it comes in. Got some information on the front. You can see Creator Professional 123E. I believe this is one of the newer ones. You can obviously see there's no physical buttons on there. It's all touchscreen. Got some uh, basic info on the back. Full coverage of domestic, Asian, European vehicles, 96 and newer. OBD2, read and clear. This thing does a uh, pretty decent amount for, you know, for its, the price of it. But uh, kind of went over some of the specs earlier, but that's the back of the box. Get this bad boy open here. There's the scanner itself. You got the uh, OBD wire. Seems like a decent length. Probably uh, four feet, maybe three and a half, three feet. No light on it or anything like that. That's the DLC connector. Here's the unit itself. Nice little handheld unit. You can see pretty decent sized screen. Looks like uh, back side's got probably the speakers. I know this thing does make noise when you first plug it in. Nothing on the sides, nice little handles for your fingers to hold it while you're holding it. Up top we got the charging, power, and the DLC connector. But that's pretty much it. I believe the box comes with a soft case. I've seen in there. Let's see if there's anything in here. I did not look in this. Uh, looks like the user guide, some Velcro straps. We got the uh, USB, maybe for updates, I'm maybe or even charging it. Not sure. I know this thing does charge when you have it plugged into the car. We'll have to go through and see. But a nice little soft case, and that's it. So I just hooked up the wire on there. It's got little thumb screws there. Make sure it's nice and tight. Let's see if this thing's charged up, powered on. Nice logo. So we're getting up to the setup. We'll go English. Next step. I believe you could hook this thing up to the Wi-Fi. Uh, I'm in Chicago, so America Central Time. There's uh, my networks. You get the password. All right, so I got the password in there. Connected. Next step. Set up email. We're gonna skip that for now. But we, I know this thing. Uh, you can record data and uh, put it in a PDF and send it to your email or send it to customers emails agree who reads that and then this looks like the home screen here so we'll go through all the features and all that stuff once we get it plugged into the car but that's pretty much the setup boot time wasn't too long maybe uh, you know maybe 35 45 seconds not too bad for especially booting up for the first time ever but we'll get this thing hooked up to a car and uh, See what it can do. All right, guys. So we got this 2003 Ford Escape. Customer brought it in. Check engine light. Obviously, we're going to start off some basic stuff. Just do a quick code, code scan on it. See if it can handle the car. See how the VIN pulls up and all that stuff. I'll show you guys the process here. All right, so got it hooked up. It automatically goes and tries to auto ID it. It's a 2003. I'm not sure if it's set up for auto ID but let's see it's giving off like a, a slot machine background noise looks like it picked it up got the key on 2003 Ford Escape we're gonna go okay let it go through the protocol
gives you all the vehicle specifications. Yes, automatic engine. Yes. All right. It takes you to this screen. Looks like it goes right into a health report. So that's kind of cool. I hope maybe it saves that. So it gives you much pretty much a launch certified health report on it. Um, going through all the modules, PCM abnormal, obviously that's where our codes are. No codes in ABS, no codes in airbag. Good deal, good deal. And then you could share it and send it to your email. It's a pretty cool feature here. But from here we're gonna go back. Um, and see what our codes are. So what's the abnormalities? So we got a PO316 and a PO304. So we got a misfire on startup. Let's see if we got uh, let's see what, what kind of PIDs we got. So we're back pretty much after the uh, we can move this little back tab around. Um, you can pretty much enter in all the modules here. This will pull up the codes and then you hit enter. It takes you into the module. And then from here, we're gonna see if we can get into PIDs. So module information, read fault codes, it already gave us that. Data stream, what we're looking for. We're probably gonna switch, uh, switch views here and jump in the vehicle, get a custom PID list going, and then uh, start this thing up, see if we can get some, uh, how the data, let's see the data stream. All right, guys. So here's our data stream. It's got a decent amount in there. It looks like 191. Um, but we just care about any of the misfire counters it may have. Oh, it's got a decent amount for sure. Field trim's covered, EVAP's covered. I didn't even know Ford does this many PIDs here. So we got injector fault we can do. Uh, check our trims while it's misfiring too. Yeah, sir flow. So it does not look like it has individual Spin two. All right. Well, at least we'll be able to get out of it when it misfires. So hit OK. There's our PID list here. Um, we could record. I'm gonna start this thing up real quick and see when we could get the misfire here. No injector faults. Um, I got my guesses on what I think it is. Yeah, it looks like you could graph it here. Gives you graph on it. It's nice. It's giving it to me in Celsius. Probably go into settings and change that. I use Fahrenheit here. Next page. Okay, I thought we picked more than this, guys. There we go. Here's the next page. All right. So we definitely got a misfire here. Mass air flood sensor grams per second. Graph more than one? No. But that's still pretty nice. It graphs one at a time there for you. Definitely a cool feature on it. So we definitely got a misfire. It got me the information that I need right now for this thing. You know, quick, quick and easy. I definitely got a misfire on startup, so I know where to go from here. And that's pretty much you know what this scanner is built for you know get you get you going on it you know for the price it is you know making quick work of grabbing a code finding out what's going on checking your pids you know it's definitely and it's got a pull to refresh but here let's go to the home screen and see what else this thing has to offer us while we're here let's figure out how to get to home screen so exit yes back so here's our home screen, and it looks like it's got our readiness monitors, a quick one to that. 
we can see what kind of monitors are ready got that pulled up shows up in green means it's done and complete X is unsupported and I'm guessing red's gonna be an issue or yellow is gonna be not ready yet it's showing the DTC's in here can you go to it from here no but it shows you number of DTC's obviously the check engine lights on so go back I always want you to exit each menu um, you got your global battery voltage this one also gives battery voltage that's pretty cool let me go and start this thing gives your drop down and it automatically checks the VIN can we stop that though and go back to battery voltage yes yeah so we could cut that so if we're just checking battery voltage it's not giving us exact but it definitely it's definitely charging you can definitely clearly see that it's charging Not too bad. So a quick little, uh, you know, generic information there. Not bad though. Obviously, you're not going to be using the scanner to check batteries, but you at least see that the alternator is charging. <clears throat> Looks like we got some updates to do right away. Eight. I'll run through that off camera. Uh, here's our settings. Let's see if we can change this over to Fahrenheit. Uh, screen capture, automatic detection. So we can turn that on when we plug it in. It, it starts rolling that slot, the slot pinwheel. We could stop that from doing that. Uh, sound network, date and time, cleanup, recovery, language, um, units of measurement. That's not telling me anything really. Um, it doesn't have change Fahrenheit. Hmm. So that's pretty much the settings menu. Here's your data. You probably look up codes. Go. You can relieve actually any recordings you've done. Diagnostic report, pretty nice. It saves all that in there. Wonder if this thing. Uh, I have to check some of the specs on this thing. I wonder how big the uh, memory is on this. Shows you where the DLC connector is. All the info on that. You could do feedback, images, uh, for grafting. Anything you save. Firmware fix. You got a DTC library to look up. That's pretty nice. So it's got a decent amount of information on here. I don't know if that's loading or what. Okay. Diagnostic. Oh, that's for pre records. Anything you record, you can go back and reference them there. So pretty nice features here. Obviously, you got your setting, battery voltage, readiness monitors. You got your upgrade button, data check codes. Jump into diagnostics to see what kind of car coverage it's got. You got your auto detect. It's got a decent amount of manufacturers in here. It looks like it covers. I got a Volvo out there. Maybe we can see if this thing hooks to. I like doing real live stuff, you know, actual check engine lights being on and all that stuff. But maybe we could go on there and see if, uh, you know, maybe it'll give us information on doing an oil reset or something like that. It's got a little search bar at the top there. But not bad at all. Not bad at all. So. And I, I learned it as we went, my first time messing around with it, not too bad. The load up times are, could be a little better, but definitely hooked to this Ford, no problem. So. All right guys, this thing handled the Ford, no problem. Got done, easy connection, got done what I had to get done on it. Uh, getting ready to sell some coils on it, write some coils up for it. Got this uh, Volvo here. I wanna go ahead and just test the auto ID, see if it connects, see if we have any connection issues. I got a Nissan here, we're gonna check out and just kinda that way we get a wide coverage of what this thing can handle and you know what it can communicate with. So Steve's gonna hook it up, see if it does the auto ID. This thing's a 2008 S60. Pop the key on, yeah, goes right into auto ID. Let's see if it does it. Boom, I heard it. You hear that chime, that means you're good. 2008 Volvo S60, yep. there it is. Go into it real quick. This thing doesn't have a check engine light, but we'll see what kind of uh, monitors it reads here. You can see the little search thing at the top, going across the little load bar. It's running through all the modules. And we could actually turn this feature off if we don't want a health report as soon as we plug it in, we could turn that off. And then there's our health report. So no problem hooking up to Volvo. We're gonna check out Nissan Maxima next. All right, here's another one, guys. We'll just keep it running down the line. We'll see if this thing hooks to the uh, 2007 Nissan Maxima. See if it does the auto ID. 
Got our man Steve here. Turn on the key first, Steve. We made quick work of that Volvo. Got the DLC plugged in. Yeah. Hurries up and goes it into it. Well, sometimes it, it'll do that and it doesn't pick it up though. Let's see if it picks it up. I know Nissans, some Nissans are tricky. Boom, I heard it. Gives you that audible beep, lets you know it connected. It and even vibrates. Say, 2007 Nissan Maxima. Maxima yeah. Do a health report on that one, see what comes up. The health report's not a bad, you know, it's not bad if that's what you're using this scanner for, getting all the, you know, history, if you're actually using it to save information and send to the customers. You know, for me, I personally wouldn't be using this scanner to get that kind of information. Um, I got the Varus directly hooked to the Wi-Fi printer and just print it out but it's a nice feature to have. And then being able to turn it off, it looks like this one's got some trans codes in it. Let it run through the modules and then we'll, we'll check those trans codes. Yeah. When does Nissan not have trans codes? You can see the progress bar load in there at the top. And then scroll down. So go to, yeah. We got some seven engine speed sensor. Up the downshift yeah, switch. Probably a valve issue. P725, P0826. Well, now that I know this, I'll uh, bring it to the customer's attention. This one was just in here for some suspension work with no lights on the dash, but I'll definitely let him know this. Maybe I'll email him this health report, but easy stuff. We've got two more to go. We'll see if we can find a Honda for the day and uh, do a German car. We got full coverage, haven't had an issue yet. We're batting uh, 0 for 3 here. Good stuff. Definitely dig it. Just took them. Yeah. There's a search code there. Brings you straight to Google. Yeah. Do a quick Google search on it. Brings up information because I got it hooked to the Wi Fi. Yeah. And it's just all pertaining to that one code. Right. Good stuff, man. You get quick information on the fly through Google. Nice. Even showed pictures. Go back to the engine right. one. Or the speed sensor. Yeah. Nice. Good stuff. A lot of great features on this one, guys. Alright, guys. Well, it got a little busy today. I didn't get a chance to uh, hook this up to a few other cars like I would have liked to, but I got to, you know, wrap this one up, give you my thoughts, quick hands-on. You guys see, I had no problems linking to the Ford, linking to that Volvo, linking to the uh, Nissan. It seemed pretty good. Uh, I mean, the only thing, I'd like to see it on a Honda. That's probably going to be the next one. I'll try to maybe get that on video, but I want to get something out there for you guys. My thoughts on this launch. 123E, for the price of it, it's a pretty decent scanner. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the, it's got nice features on there. You got, if you do hook it up to the Wi-Fi, you can do the quick Google searches on some of these codes. You guys seen it picked up the uh, trans control module on that Nissan. Pulled up some codes that I didn't even know had, was on there. Um, I did talk to the customer about it. But, I mean, for what it is and uh, get it done, I know they have other models other than this one. This one's probably more of a basic one. But for the price, I got nothing bad to say about it. It seems like a decent scanner. Um, you guys know I've reviewed a few of them, but uh, this one's definitely, uh, definitely decent for the cost. But as always, links to it be down in the description. You guys want to check one out, grab one up for yourself. Uh, I'll definitely be uh, checking this thing out, putting it through the ringer. Maybe we'll revisit it and uh, see what it's worth if I run into any issues. But so far, so good. I, you know, it's it seems like a decent scanner for a you know a mid-launch scanner. Definitely be using this around the shop more often. So, as always, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Signing out.